This is the Volvo EX30. It comes in five different colors and three different models. Basically, it has the standard range, extended range, and a performance model like this one, whereas the two standard and extended range actually has a single motor driving the rear wheels. This one actually has dual motors powering all four wheels. Let's take a look at the interior. Basically, it's very simple because, well, they just want to make sure the driver has more attention to pay attention to the road and driving. This is basically very bare, although everything else is controlled on this 12.3 inch uh, LCD screen, which I'll come to a bit in a bit. The uh, pocket areas for uh, putting stuff here, you have an area over here where you can open up and you actually uh, have two USB-C ports at the bottom. You also have the ability to uh, wirelessly charge your phone if you want to, just put it over here on the left hand side of the section and you can actually charge your phone. There is also hidden cup holders so you put it up over here and you have two cup holders here, standard size ones here. Uh, the uh, one, one thing that is a bit odd is that they have the uh, window controls here on the center handrest section for some weird reason. Looking at the uh, door area here. It's pretty basic. The door handle is pretty interesting. Like a nice grip handle here you can see. And uh, door trim is nice. Though the uh, pocket section here is good enough to put in like, small items like uh, touch cards and everything. Uh, but it's not good, it's not big enough to or does not have a cup holder section too. For the rear seats, it's actually pretty comfortable. If you're of, of average height, you basically have a lot of space for your feet. If you're slightly taller and have longer legs, just push the front seat forward a little bit and you have plenty of room after that. The seats are slightly tilted too, so when you sit down, you actually uh, have a very nice contour and very nice seating position. And if you put your head back, you can look through the moonroof, which is actually a very nice touch over here. So you can actually just relax and sit down like this. It's very comfortable. I've sat in other vehicles because this is the most comfortable so far in a small uh, compact SUV vehicle. Uh, all the other uh, safety features you have here, your seat belts, your ISO fix for your baby uh, seats and all. You have a center console here which have a bit of space for you to put some stuff and also USB-C ports here too to charge your phone, slot here to put in your phone as well and you have your window control on the center here which is not really the standard on the door side normally. You also have some hooks here you can hang stuff. Most of us in Malaysia would say when we tap our food or we pack food you can actually just hang it here. So you have a very nice touch. I like this a lot and this is a basically a very comfortable rear seat here. So if you have children no problem at all. If you have adults that you want to fetch, probably comfortably sits two uh, average size adults and that so shouldn't be a problem for this vehicle. Talking about the boot space, it is uh, plenty of space over here. I think it's, uh, I'm not sure of the capacity but I'll put it somewhere on the screen. But you'll be able to fit in luggages, no problem. I think a big backpack also will do. I got my small pack over here, you can see how much space it takes up over here. And uh, yeah, I think Golf bags is possible as well. I'm not sure if you can feel like that, but the seats can actually fold down and you can you'll be able to put more stuff if the seats fold down too. We also have a small like a uh, guideline over here that Volvo has put here so you can see what can fit and the measurements as well. Also in the front, if you open this up, you do have another compartment over here where you can put some additional items. Not to say the biggest items you can put over here, but I guess if you want to put emergency stuff here and store it here, it's not too bad an idea too. So everything you see here and in the car, when you control it, you're actually using this 12.3 inch screen. So everything is controlled, your climate control, your car charging, your devices, everything on the car is controlled by this uh, panel over here. So <clears throat> let's go back to the main menu here. You can see that it's actually pretty much standardized and it gives you a lot of information, whether your phone is connected, etc. You got Google Assist because it's actually a Google uh, OS on the uh, 
whole panel here, which also has come to Google Map, which is very nice. You can have it there too. They have got some radar information here. You can see in the view. You got your information, safety information too. Plus, you got your um, speedometer, your charge level, and everything all there too. You also have the uh, gear selection here, select to view. You do have an option here to go into the car settings. You can change all the lighting and everything else. The one thing is that I want to show you is that if, when I say control everything, if you want to control or change the uh, you know the adjustment of that mirror here whether left or right you do have to come into the tablet here and come over to settings controls scroll down a bit and just use adjust mirrors here like this and you can change left or right and you just will use these uh, controls here on the steering wheel to adjust the mirror over there same goes for the one on the left hand side as well so yes Everything much uh, pretty much nowadays in all EV cars, everything is controlled. Majority of it is all controlled on the tablet itself that you have in front. And yeah, so all the controls are here. You will see there is nothing else, no other buttons on this particular car. The only other buttons you have are on the steering wheel. The left hand side is more for cruise control and pilot assist uh, options. This one's for your other uh, uses like volume control or uh, next uh, track controls and your. Uh, Google Assist as well. You do have the uh, gear stock here on the right hand side on the steering column and you have your lights and the uh, wipers uh, on the left hand side too. If you're wondering what this black thing is, basically it's just a sensor. You should see a small light over there through the camera. It's actually monitoring the driver. So if it detects you are tired and everything like that, it also has that feature that will pop up on the screen here to tell you that, oh, you know, you're tired please take, take a rest, take a break from your driving. So yeah, everything here in the car is pretty much integrated into that tablet here in terms of control wise. I'm in a car park right now. I want to see how the park assist works. So basically what you're going to do is I'm going to switch it over. I'm going to uh, basically change this to camera mode. Okay, and this one over here will tell you it's scanning for, for parking lots. I'm just going to move forward a little bit and it's going to detect some parking lots. I'm going to now select one. So I'm going to stop. It's going to show me that I have some lots over here, right? So I'm going to pick the uh, first one over here, which is next to this car. Okay, and I'm going to let go of the brake pedal. Car is going to maneuver itself. And done. When it comes to driving this car, it's actually pretty comfortable. Now you're able to drive this car as a daily drive and also with the power, you actually have the ability to take it out for a fun drive too. So if you have, you know, you want to go for a weekend kind of drive through the mountain roads, no problem at all. Also with the suspension here, they have front McPherson's and uh, rear multi-link suspensions which it actually makes the car really comfortable to sit in and drive with. But also at the same time, if you want performance, there is no problems there too. You actually have the ability to uh, use it, use that power as well. There's no issues there when it comes to having drivability options here for this car. So hand handling wise is fantastic. I'm, I'm telling you that uh, most of um, EVs that I've driven so far, when you actually drive the car, you know it's, uh, it's an EV because it's a little bit heavier than normal cars because of the batteries. And I don't feel that weight here in this car when you drive it, especially even when you're driving it normally, it just feels effortless to move off. And I'm hardly using the throttle, probably about 10-15% most of the time. And if I do like go 100%, the car just shoots off like crazy. So it's plenty of power for the car. I'll put the specs in, uh, in the screen here so you can see the power uh, numbers if you are interested in that. And yeah, you know, <clears throat> it's, uh, 
very easy car to drive and the, the best thing here is that they made it easy for the driver to you know just come in the car no buttons to press no start to stop button nothing come in the car put it into drive and you can go right just just concentrate on driving itself that's about it that's all you need to do and driving around town fantastic man. It's, it's a very nice uh, very nice uh, feeling to drive this car around not an issue at all like I said, if you need power, just put your foot down a little bit and you got enough power to get away from a lot of the uh, other vehicles around you and just continue driving. Fantastic. When you talk about safety, Volvo is synonymous with that because basically they have been putting in all the safety features they have in their arsenal to put into the car ever since I you know, started driving one many many years ago and i remember that i actually picked up the manual because i wanted to know what safety features they had in here and there was a tick book and almost half of the book was all about their safety features how to activate the safety features what they do and all the precautionary measures and everything right now they have even more of that because you got active uh, kind of safety and also passive kind of safety and they got additional uh, driver aids nowadays as well so one of my favorite features is basically the adaptive cruise control or ACC and also the pilot assist now these work well and I love them when you're in a traffic jam because it actually allows the car to help you drive for you in a jam and I don't like try driving traffic jams honestly I think nobody likes to drive in traffic jams so those features are actually really good it still allows the driver to concentrate on the road but taking out a little bit more of the guesswork of you know uh, whether or not things are going to happen it's the additional safety feature there are additional driver aid that that will allow the driver to be more comfortable driving but but still in control of course so i have already turned on acc mode and you can see over here it is uh kind of like now on ACC I set it at 70 kilometers per hour at a maximum but because it detects the car in front of me in my lane it's keeping its distance and yes once the uh, if I want to move away and get away or if the car moves away it will go up to about 50 kilometers uh, back to 70 kilometers per hour as long as the lane is in uh, it's available so right now it's just following and tailing that car in front so it's keeping a nice distance here at 55 kilometers per hour now with the acc that's only going to be a speed you still have a full control of the vehicle you still need to steer the car um, but with pilot assist once i change it over here i'm just going to press the button over here it's going to change the mode here to pilot assist and you can see that by the right hand side over here it shows the steering option and what this uh, pilot assist will do is uh, it will use ACC plus the uh, radar in the car to also help steer the vehicle in the same lane based on the cars in front of you. So <clears throat> this is uh, now following tailing that car. So now the car is moving off. So let's I'm gonna put it over here a little bit and see now you see the car is actually steering itself through the lane. I'm not actually putting any effort into turning right now this is not fully an, a full automation you still need to basically uh, have your hand and concentrate on the road as well so it's not 100% uh, an automation it would kind of like guide the car based on the lines on the road and also using the radar information that, that make sure making sure there's no cars in front so this kind of, uh, well, it will help you a little bit depending on how you want to drive. Maybe you want to take it a bit easy, let the car do the work. I'm not even on the throttle, it's controlling itself. I put it at 70 kilometers per hour max, right? So it's doing its job driving uh, almost on its own. And it's actually really, really good in traffic jams as well. If you have stop go traffic, this actually helps a lot and also kind of like uh, if you want to set to make sure that you don't go past the speed limit this is also one of the best options to set as well uh, yeah pilot assist and also ACC two of my favorite kind of uh, 
options in the Volvo EX30. Now I needed to charge the car up, so I'm actually at the charging station. We started charging the car at 46% about two minutes ago. So I'm actually using the fast charger and it says here, okay, the charging, if you go up to 90%, it'll be done in about 25 minutes. Now I'm actually using a, I'm at the fast charger at one of the fast charging stations here. Uh, looking at the charging here, I think the uh, kilowatt here is going, uh, it was 112 earlier on, it goes up to 102 now. Yes, it kind of fluctuates using the uh, CCS charging port. So this actually is the DC fast charger option for the uh, vehicle. And yeah, we'll see uh, how fast it takes to charge the car. I'm hoping it charges quickly. So I can get on my way again. Audio-wise, it's quite interesting. Volvo has opted to not put multiple speakers in the car, but they opted to put like one big soundbar looking thing on the front dash area here. It is by Harman Kardon. Uh, so basically you are getting good audio, definitely. It's just that it's quite unique that they actually use a like one soundbar system. But in all honesty, the audio sounds pretty awesome. Now I can't really show, I can't really give you, you know, a, a review on how it sounds like. You actually have to go and check out one of the cars in the showroom and test out the audio yourself. But because it's a Harman system, you would bet it's a lot of punch in the bass. That is really nice. I thought it was a subwoofer, but basically there is a subwoofer in this uh, soundbar looking thing. But yes, it's, it's, it's really good. It's, uh, you can also go into the uh, panel here to do and change all the settings if you want to and just change all and tweak all the equalizers if you really want to kind of like fine tune it to your liking. But yeah, pretty interesting because uh, that way you save weight and also you save materials and putting it all into the car which actually aligns with what Volvo is trying to do, being very sustainable to make the interior nice looking as well. So yeah, Harman, excellent choice over here for the audio system. Okay, let's do the 0 to 100 test. I'm going to change the setting here the, for the car to one pedal drive is off, performance all wheel drive on, and I think that's it. So we're going to over here, I'm going to step on the brake pedal, hold down the <coughs> gas, and go. And a hundred. Whoa. <laughs> okay. That's fun. If you're in the market for a compact SUV and an electric vehicle, I think the EX30 is the perfect package. Uh, Price-wise, it's, uh, it's really good competitive uh, handling, power, features, and safety. It's all there. And also from a reliable brand. So take, do go over to the Volvo showroom and check it out. Have a, book a test drive, test out the car and see whether or not it fits you. And uh, yeah, it's, I think it's a very, it's a, probably a very complete car for this particular uh, size of vehicle and its class. Special thanks to Volvo for allowing me to take the car out for a few days to shoot the video. If there is one thing that the car needs, I think it is a dash cam. And if you are looking for one, check out the video.